Hey gamers, I'm back. In today's video, I will be going back to my roots and making another sculpture. The art history content will still be made now and then, but you know, I'll, I'll get to it when I get to it. But I will be making more art videos in general also. So recently, I watched the Apple TV show Prehistoric Planet and I gotta tell you, man, it was so freaking good. Perfect, everything down to the last minute details. A lot of media love to show these ancient ass animals as goofy movie monsters, which, you know, has its place in entertainment. But what I really loved about Prehistoric Planet is that it directed its focus at portraying the dinosaurs and other ancient animals as silly and jovial creatures, just in general going about their goofy little lives in their own goofy little ways. The show basically portrayed these dinosaurs as just normal animals, other than the fact that some were absolutely massive of course, but I really appreciate that. And one scene in particular really, really stuck out to me. Now, somehow, he must impress her. Now, the Carnotaurus was never really my favorite dinosaur. Its small, low arms were just too silly in my opinion, and it just always looked like a small little T-Rex with horns. However, in this show, they hypothesized that the arms might have been used for mating displays due to the fact that its shoulder joints allowed for incredible flexibility and its shoulder blade allowed for massive muscles to be attached to it. So, tiny seemingly useless arms, but a lot of resources dedicated to its mobility. Yeah, being a flashy tool for display makes a lot of sense. But because of that, we have what is possibly one of my favorite dinosaur scenes from any media I have ever consumed. He was just so cute, so now I have to sculpt him. The sculpting process is the same as ever. I am using an oven-baked polymer clay with brass rods and two pass epoxy to stabilize it. And as always, if you get the proportions bulked out correctly by measuring often and using good reference images, the sculpting process becomes much, much easier. The only problem with that is the fact that this is an extinct animal. So finding accurate 3D references is kind of really hard. It's not like human anatomy that's been studied to death, but I did a lot of reading in the process of sculpting this boy, so hopefully he is decently accurate, but I apologize for any dinosaur nerds watching, if there are any watching, <laughs> in case there are any inaccuracies. Anyways, this genus of animal is only known from a single fossil, from a single individual, from a single species, I believe. However, it is a surprisingly well-preserved fossil, so we have a lot to go off of. So. Using the image of a reconstructed skeleton, I was able to measure out an armature and fill in the general shape of the animal using what we know of its family, the Abilisaurus. We also know that it likely felt the predatory niche of the cheetah, being the speedy rushdown predator of the late Cretaceous South America. Knowing this, I made sure to sculpt him to be decently lean, at least by dinosaur standards. It's not like they were ever as aerodynamic as cheetahs were, but compared to the likes of T-Rex or, I don't know, Giganotosaurus, these were a bit leaner and more of an aerochad. Basically, I just copied the general vibes of the prehistoric planet version with a few added differences here and there. This also allowed me to follow my natural tendencies to sculpt everything with massive freaking thighs. You know, him being a runner and all. And on top of that, his tail was likely very stiff to assist him in running you know, acting like an anchor point for his massive thigh muscles. So even though I do have it bent slightly, I try to minimize the vertical flexibility of his tail. His face is also very hawkish. It's much shorter and deeper than other predatory dinosaurs. Again, likely because of its predatory niche. And other than the general face shape and tiny arms, probably the most identifiable aspect of the Carnotaurus is the horns. This is literally in the name, which translate to carnivorous bull. We don't really have a clue what this is used for since there aren't any large modern predators with horns like this. Like, it makes sense for cows and other bovines that use it for fighting among themselves, as well as self-defense. But compared to cow skull, Carnotaurus heads were much more filled with holes, and therefore being much larger and more powerful, this probably meant that using its head in a literal sense probably didn't end well. Anyways, maybe it was used for display, I don't know. 
We also only have the cores of these horn protrusions, so the horns might have been much larger, but I'm sticking to the conservative side of artistic reconstruction because it's cuter. And I've put in an amateur rod to stabilize it and prevent me from breaking it by brushing up against it accidentally. His tiny low arms are also made in a similar manner, but I use a two-part epoxy instead of clay so that it is nice and solid as I sculpt around it. It sticks out a lot more than the horns and the fingers would have been so absurdly fragile that I didn't want to risk sculpting it in clay. The legs and feet also had an armature and epoxy core for stability. Um, I don't really know what else to talk about the legs to be honest. They're basically just really thick chicken legs with massive thighs. <laughs> Lastly, once I am happy with the proportions and skin details, I went and added in the skin bumps. Now, I believe that the prehistoric planet version was in production before studies were done on this. So in the show, the Carnotaurus had regular rows of bumpy textures like on crocodiles, but this was not the case. Actually, I, I don't think any dinosaurs had this. Um, instead, Carnotaurus fossil was preserved with skin impressions that suggest a more irregular spread of these scoots all over the body with the largest ones being on its back. Now, personally, I thought this made it look more like the Gronkle from How to Train Your Dragon, which is amazing, because that thing is so cute. And so this is a win in my book. What isn't a win, however, is the fact that I had to hand sculpt all of these. I don't really know if there are better methods other than picking a different dinosaur entirely to sculpt. But basically, I had to, one by one, poke little holes with my sculpting tool brush it with isopropyl alcohol to soften it, put in a ball of clay and smooth it out, one by one. It felt like I was doing this forever. There must have been at least 50 of these and I never want to do it again. Anyways, after two cycles of baking it at 90 degrees celsius for 15 minutes, that is the whole process. It took a really long time. I was working on this one for more than a month while making my other videos, but I did have a lot of fun doing it. Fun fact, I only started doing art because I really wanted to draw dinosaurs. One time I even threw a tantrum because my sister, who is a year older, got to go to art class after school. And I also wanted to go, you know, just to learn about how to draw dinosaurs better. I've since matured and moved on to more grown-up subject matters like dragons, Garfields, and men with thick butts and thighs. But here I am, sculpting a cool dinosaur again. Uh, this was really fun. And if you enjoyed watching this and want to watch more random art projects made by me, please feel free to like, share, subscribe, and all that. Thanks guys, the next videos will be coming soon.
primes with both direction and magnitude. Oh yeah! 